trees are amazing. Seriously, trees are brilliant. If you're ever feeling sort of down or a bit miserable or you think but the magic has gone out of the world, just go and look at a tree. And have a look up and have a little think about what a tree does. Because a tree basically makes itself out of air, water, soil and sunshine. And I think one reason trees are better than people is if I gave you air, water, soil and sunshine, I don't think you'd be able to make very much, let alone replicate yourself and bring life to the planet. The trees can do that and they're very cool. And the natural environment of a tree is also very amazing. The forest or the woodland. And it's not just because of the, not just because of the trees themselves, the individual trees themselves, it's because of the relationships between those trees. It's because of the other flora and fauna that exist around them, the bees and the birds and the bats and the animals, the understory, the flowers that grow underneath them. Also, crucially, the soil. The mycorrhizal relationships beneath the soil between the fungi and the trees and the tree roots that create this incredible ecosystem, this amazing environment that sort of just supports itself and is absolutely wonderful. This talk's not about that. <clears throat> if you came for the woodland talk, this is the wrong talk, I'm afraid. I, uh, I don't do that sort of stuff. I do arboriculture or urban forestry. And what that means is I take these trees from this amazing environment where on a global scale, these trees are the air conditioning of the planet. They're the, they mitigate climate change. They cool down the planet. They provide habitat and shelter for vast numbers of species, including our own, we take them from that environment and we put them places like this. And then we sort of say, go on. <laughs> Do your thing. Bring us life. Um, and amazingly, amazingly, they do. They do do just that. Uh, against all odds, they do deliver and they do deliver us many, many things. And I say against all odds because in an urban environment, you've got pollution, you've got compaction, you've got loads of people, you've got competition for space, you've got loads of stuff going on underground with services and utilities and roads and all the stuff that we know comes with the city. Trees are competing against all of those things and yet they still do it. They still deliver fantastic things for us. And for many years, I think it's fair to say, the principal benefit of trees that was understood by people and politicians was that they were nice things, they were pretty. It was an aesthetic amenity benefit. They're green and they're fluffy and they look nice. And of course they are green and fluffy and they look nice, most of them, and that's really important. But when you have an asset which only is perceived as having amenity value, as a nice thing to have, then when financial times go bad, when the economy shrinks, when cuts are made, it's the non-essentials that lose out. It's the non-essentials that get lost before the essentials. So over the last few years, there's been a lot of work done by many people all over the world to demonstrate all of the things that trees do, to describe those things, to promote those things, and in many cases, to quantify the benefits, to actually put numbers, to put monetary values on the benefits that trees are delivering. And we like to say there's environmental, economic, and social benefits of trees in the urban environment, and collectively we call these ecosystem services. And there's many, many of them, and I'm not gonna go through them all, but I just wanted to spend time on a couple that I thought were quite relevant to an urban area. So this is uh, a street in my hometown and it shows something that trees do quite well. It's quite an intuitive thing. I think it's a very important thing. Casting shade, cooling down the urban environment. It's a lovely hot day today. Beneath the shade of a tree, it's cooler. It makes sense to us. This is an obvious thing. You can see the difference between where there is no tree and where there is a tree. It's quite an obvious image. Trees don't just cool down the urban environment and mitigate the urban heat island effect by shade. They also um, cool it down through evapotranspiration. So they draw up the moisture through their roots. They send it out through the canopies and they cool it down that way as well. So trees cooling the urban area, making urban places nicer places to live, more livable, healthier places for people to enjoy. This is also, this is a, a sort of predominantly a residential street. It's closed off at one end, so it's quite a quiet thoroughfare. And another one of the benefits of trees is it improves social cohesion. If you make a place nicer, people want to go there, they want to spend time there, people meet each other, it helps build communities. They also help reduce crime, because if you make a place nicer to go, more people go there, there's more eyes on the street, and certain types of crime are reduced as a result of trees. Just as simple as planting a few trees there. This also shows there's publicly owned trees and there's privately owned trees. And of course, all of them make up the urban forest. All kinds of trees within any given urban area are part of the urban forest. This is another picture from my hometown, and this one shows quite well, I think, um, 
what trees can do in terms of stormwater management and rainfall. We know we've got a change in climate. We know that there's things going on. We're seeing different kinds of weather, not only hot days, but also very, very wet days, lots and lots of rainfall. And that water has to go somewhere. And the conventional drainage system that we have is often aging and often under pressure. Well, trees intercept a huge amount of rainfall, masses, high percentages, 60, maybe 70% of the rain that falls on this tree will be retained in the canopy by the leaves and then drawn down slowly through the leaves onto the stem and down into the tree pit area. That slows down the amount of time it takes to get to the drainage system. It reduces flooding, it reduces stormwater runoff, and it reduces the amount of money that is spent on those things. So trees doing something else there. Also here, this is an old oak tree. In the background, you've got relatively new development. And it's good that they did that because in development situations with, with uh, property sales, research has shown that uh, well-maintained green infrastructure, trees around houses, can increase the uh, amount of money that that house will sell for and decrease the amount of time it'll be sat on the market. Now, that might be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your perspective and depending on where you are on the housing ladder. But for us as tree managers, it's a very useful tool because when we have developers saying we've got to cut down these trees because we want to put in more units and make more money, we can actually say, well, hang on. If you retain these trees, if you work around them, then they'll bring you in more money. This is a, a you know, commercial benefit. There's more commercial benefits if you have well-maintained green infrastructure, good street trees, good trees or parks around commercial areas, shops and cafes. Research again has shown that people will spend more time in shops which have trees outside or green infrastructure around them and they'll spend more money in those shops on the same item that they would do in a, another shop without the green infrastructure and the greenery outside. So they're not my favorite arguments, the economic ones, but they're very, very useful to us because we can sell that. You know, money talks a lot of the time, unfortunately, and we can say, look, trees are delivering economic benefits all over the place. Health, health benefits are massive. Benefits to human health from trees. I just wanted to give you a few examples from sort of cradle to grave all the way through because trees really do deliver some serious benefits in this field. So in the lowest economic social group, Pregnant women who spend time close to green infrastructure during pregnancy have bigger, healthier babies. Children exposed to green infrastructure at a young age show less signs of um, allergies. You know, the healthier children. That's got to be a really easy sell for trees, surely. Healthier children. Later on in life, if you're in hospital, patients recover more quickly and are discharged more quickly if they have a view over green infrastructure than if they have a view over hard landscaping or no view at all. This gets people out of hospital beds quicker. You know, this is good for the NHS as well. It's good for everybody. In later life, again, uh, the elderly have been shown to have more chance of living an additional five years if they live close by to green infrastructure. And another massive benefit of trees is the mental health aspect. Mental health is being talked about a lot at the moment. There is evidence that shows that there's a positive relationship between tree canopy cover, an increase in tree canopy cover, and a reduction in prescriptions for antidepressants. So you may be hearing more about uh, prescriptions for nature instead of just throwing pills at a problem. Go and walk in the park, go and walk in the woods, spend some time around nature. Obviously not everything can be solved by that, but a lot of things can be. Things can get a little bit better from doing that. So there is an awful lot of benefits of urban trees. But there's two things as well to remember about this. One is that many of the benefits uh, I've just mentioned are positively correlated to canopy size. So the bigger the tree you have, the more benefits you get. Things like shade, water attenuation kind of makes sense. The other thing I've mentioned a couple of times is well-maintained green infrastructure. So it's got to be well-maintained. It's got to be uh, looked after properly. And that's very, very important because a lot of people, I think, maybe think that you get a tree and you stick it in the ground and then you walk away and you can come back 20 or 30 years later and you'll find this amazing mature tree delivering all of these ecosystem services, just pumping out benefits to, to all the residents. If you plant a tree, walk away and come back 20 years later, you're going to find either a dead tree or no tree at all. That's not how it works. Between identifying a site that is potentially suitable for a tree and getting your mature tree at the end, there is a lot of work involved, a lot of expert specialist work involved. <coughs> and in the UK, particularly uh, in uh, publicly owned trees, so trees uh, like this or along streets or in parks or in schools, that work is done by tree officers or tree managers local authority employees who are under the same pressures as all of the local, author local authority employees that we know about, reductions in budgets, cuts, expected to do more with less, under threat of jobs. But we don't often hear a lot about tree officers. Nobody's really lamenting the, the plight of the tree officer. But they're important. And I think they're great people. Part of my job is to promote tree officers, so I'm kind of biased. 
but they're great people. Tree officers are custodians of the urban forest. They're quite strange, people who go into trees, um, for many reasons, but the only one I'll mention uh, now is because it's quite weird to do a job where you know you're never going to see the benefits of it. You've got to have quite a strange mentality to plant a tree and try and picture that in 50, 100, 200 years. We know we're not going to see the good stuff we're doing from these trees, but you still do them. And tree officers do a really good job as well because they don't have to be... They don't have to be just tree experts, or of course they do have to be tree experts. They have to know about trees and biomechanics and pests and diseases, but they have to understand the soil. Many of them have to understand contracts and contract management. They have to see the law. They have to understand policy. There's a lot of stuff. And they're also ambassadors for arboriculture. Tree offices often will be the only point of contact the general public has with the arboricultural industry. So they're ambassadors for arboriculture. Sometimes they're social workers for arboriculture. They've got to go out there, they've got to explain to residents why we've got to cut this tree down or why we're not going to cut this tree down. They're sort of, they're multi-skilled experts dealing with multifunctional assets. And they do a really, really good job, but they're under pressure. So please remember that. So I guess the point of uh, one of these talks, I think, is to leave the audience thinking about stuff they wouldn't ordinarily think about. So what I'd ask you to do when you next go outside and look at your tree outside your place of work or your home or your local park or whatever, look at that tree and I want you to think three things. I want you to think three things. Number one, that's really cool. Trees, trees are really cool, that's great. It's really easy to take stuff for granted. Trees are amazing and they're growing in our cities and our streets and our parks. That's really, really great. So remember that, trees are cool, first of all. Secondly, it may look like that tree's not doing an awful lot. It's just kind of sitting there, lazy tree. It's not doing too much, <laughs> but it's really busy. That tree's doing loads and loads of stuff that you can't see. And it's doing stuff to benefit you and your friends and your family and your communities. And that tree is busy doing that all of the time. <coughs> but then thirdly, please also remember that it's not doing it all by itself. There are people who have devoted their careers and their lives to looking after these trees, to deliver those benefits to you, your friends, your family, and your communities. So give a little thought as well, as well as thinking how great the trees are, Think a little bit about the people who manage them and who are looking after them on your behalf. Thank you very much indeed.